Hello, my friends, and welcome back to the studio. David Kessler here talking about photographing your art. And I'm going to say right off the top, this is not a technical post or technical video. Uh, we're not going to talk about light meters and gray cards and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in, in uh, you know, technology, uh, specific camera techniques and all that, this post is not for you, so I'll see you later. This post is for artists. Uh, the average artist who just wants to photograph their work easily and quickly without a lot of problems and without a lot of uh, technological issues. Okay, so if that's what you want, hey, this post is just for you. And thank you for joining me. The first thing I'm going to say is there is no one way to photograph your artwork. There's no one way that's going to work for everybody. Uh, you have to find what works for you best and then do that. When I was a watercolor painter, I used to have a lot of white paper showing through or a lot, a lot of white paper left on my watercolor paintings. So photographing those paintings in direct light uh, was not something I can do. I had to use indirect light to do that. Uh, with my paintings now, like this one back here, you know, they're sort of mostly middle value. Uh, with some dark value and some light value. So what I find is for me, I photograph my paintings in direct sunlight. And I know some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, he can't do that. You can't photograph paintings in direct sunlight. <laughs> I've been told this so many times, it's mind blowing. Yes, you can, and it works great for me. It may not work for your, for your paintings. If your paintings have a lot of light value in them, predominantly light value, it's probably going to be too light to do in direct sunlight. My paintings were great in south light, you know, anywhere from about, depending on the time of year, you know, noon to two o'clock. For me, that's perfect. I just take it out on the south side of my house, actually right out through the studio here, through the garage, out into the driveway and photograph it there in direct light, sunlight, south light. Now, I've had people all my career say, well, you can't do that. I say, well, I do it and they look great. Uh, my advice to you is find the place in and around your home that gives the best light for your paintings. Now, it may be that you use these photo, uh, photography lights that I have set up here all around me. Maybe that's what you do in your studio and that works for you. For me, it tends not to work as good. I can do that in a pinch, uh, but it's not the best solution for me, but it may be the best solution for your work. I would try different times of day. I would try south light, north light, east, west, see what works. Different times of day, different lighting conditions, see what works for you. I know what works for me after a long, long bouts of experimentation to see what worked uh, actually for two and a half decades <laughs> worth of experimentation so it takes a little while to figure out what works for you but do it and I want to encourage you photograph every single thing that you do whether it's studies or failed paintings or whatever because that gives you a sort of a historical record of your work and you can look back on that you know like right now I can look back over 25 years worth of, of paintings and failures and successes and say, wow, you know, I can't believe that at one time I thought this painting was the best painting I'd ever do. And, and you know, 10 paintings later was the best painting I'd ever do. And then five was the best I'd ever do. It always gets better. The more you paint, the better painter you'll be. So this just provides a photographic record uh, of your work for you. So that later on, Right, you can look back and then pat yourself on the back and say, wow, I have really gotten better as a painter. Now, what I do is photograph the things, you know, like I say, outside. Then I transfer those to my computer to do cropping and color correction. Now, I know there are people that, plenty of people that do cropping right on their camera or their phone camera or whatever device it is that you use to photograph. Um, and you can do that. If you feel more comfortable cropping on your, on your device, then do that. I prefer to do all that on my computer. Now, 
what should you use to photograph your paintings with? Uh, I think as long as the camera is 10 to 12 megapixels minimum, you're good to go. I personally use an iPhone, uh, iPhone 6S. That's what I use. People there again, they say, well, you can't photograph it with that. It's not high enough resolution. Look, it works for me, right? It works for me. That's all I can say. If you have a nice camera, use the camera. Uh, you know, everybody has a different sort of a level of, of uh, technology and equipment that they feel comfortable with, and that's fine. You use what's comfortable for you that gets the best results for your paintings. And make sure, you know, you can use any kind of software for doing color correction and cropping and all that. There's lots of free software out there. There's free apps. Uh, you know, if you use a Mac system, there's free apps out there. Plenty of stuff. I personally use Photoshop Elements just because I have that uh, in, on my computer and have used that for years. And I use it for many other different things. But I would never recommend that just for cropping and color correction of your photographs. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just a little uh, kind of a setup of, of how you can use your phone on a tripod and everything. Uh, so we're going to be right back. All right, here's an easy setup for your next photography session. Uh, you can use simply use an easel or any sort of a backdrop to support your artwork. And then have a tripod. You know, and I use my phone. Like I said, I use my phone to photograph my work. Uh, simple iPhone. And you can get this adapter for a tripod through Amazon. Uh, it's just, just search iPhone adapter for a tripod, right? And that'll come right up. And there's several different brands, and you clip that right in there. And then you, you kind of want this angle of the painting and the phone or your camera to be about the same. You want them to be as parallel as possible when you're framing out your work. Now, when I'm doing my photography, I try to leave a little edge around it so then I can crop it down when I get it to my computer or when I'm, you know, uh, uh, trying to get the color correction. You usually do the cropping first, then color correction. I don't think that makes any difference, right? But a simple tripod, you can get that through Amazon too for probably $25 or $35. A little adapter, probably $6 or $8. And then whatever device you use, could be your phone, could be a camera that you have, right? Uh, anything works. Uh, I don't have any preference for it. Whatever works best for you. And then set it up either outdoors or indoors based on, you know, your preference and what works best for your paintings. All right, now once you photograph your work, and I can't emphasize this enough, please crop your paintings. Crop, crop, crop. That means don't show the frame. Don't show anything behind it. I mean, I love dogs and cats, but I don't want to see your dog or your cat behind your painting. Look, I jury a lot of shows, and I see this all the time. People submit photographs, and I'll, be, I'll see their car behind there, or their house, or their dog, or their cat, or their kids, or their grandkids. Look, I don't want to see that. If I see that as a juror in a show, you're not getting in. Because if you don't want to take the time to, to make your paintings look professional in photographs, then you're not going to have a painting in a show that I'm going to jury. Okay, so it's really important that you crop them. Make sure your images are not blurry. Another thing I see all the time, blurry photographs. There's no reason in the world to ever take a blurry photograph. If you use a tripod, you don't have to worry about blurry photos, okay? Crop them, color correct, make sure they're clear, nothing behind it, and don't show the frame, only the work. And if you frame your stuff, photograph it before you frame it. You can't photograph it with that glass on there, believe me. Other thing is, if you use a glossy varnish over your paintings, photograph it prior to placing the varnish on your work. Once you get that gloss on there, it is almost impossible to take a good photograph that doesn't have some sort of glare or shininess to it. Okay, Believe me, I learned that the, <laughs> the hard way many years ago. Right, so make it as easy on yourself as possible. Work, use what works for you. Use a camera that works for you. Use lighting that works for you. Be sure and crop and color correct so that they look as close as possible to your originals. You don't have to use a lot of fancy equipment. You don't need a fancy camera. You don't need to spend a lot on 
photographer's lights or any of that kind of stuff, keep it simple so that you'll do it. Uh, practice it so that you can get better at it and just make it part of your studio and painting process and you'll be much more successful um, as an artist if you have good images of your work. You'll need those to get into shows. Uh, you'll need those to make postcards or whatever that you have of your work. Uh, you'll need that to, to, to make promotional things for open studio events or co-op events or whatever it is that you do to sell your artwork. So photographs are very important. Uh, and also keep in mind, and I always mention this to my students in the workshops, you know, don't use the, the raw photos that you use, uh, that you take uh, for your website because the images will be too large. All right, so I have one folder that I keep my paintings, uh, paintings in by year. I keep track of everything by year. So all the ones that I do this year are in a two seven, uh, 2017 folder. But then when I want to put them on my website or social media, I'll copy those over to another folder and resize them. Don't ever resize your originals. Always make a copy and resize those uh, because you want smaller images on your website so that, number one, it loads quicker, and number two, that so that somebody can't print that thing off on a big printer and hang it on their wall uh, as a sort of a poster of your work. Right, and I keep mine at a thousand pixels, maximum a thousand pixels in the longest dimension. You can do whatever works for you. I found that is works perfectly for my website and for other things on social media. All right, I hope this video was helpful for you. Uh, you know, if you've had photography problems or you have suggestions, please leave those in the comments below. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.